manu me mechanical engineering students, it's the manufacturing engineering students primarily, and their expertise is in computer control and the automation. And so they're trying to figure out how to automate, automate this project, and then it ties into another, um, that our students are going to talk about, another project that we've done uh, for Betty Riley at the South Central Oregon Economic Development District. We have a million gallon a year biodiesel producer here at the South Valley whose, whose project is heated diesel geothermal when you've been to there, but 20 miles south of here. And uh, he has a problem with moisture sensing, the moisture of the mass that comes through has to be controlled within 12% within, uh, uh, plus or minus a quarter point, and it was a $20,000 piece of equipment to try to get to work. And so we think by working with our engineers and our computer um, uh, software people that we're going to be able to come up with something using some other technologies for about a thousand dollars. And so Drew Loika, who is the he's, the, he's the computer software guy. We have Keith Ragland, some other students here who are going to talk to you a little bit about this project and then we'll continue a little bit more about about uh, the things that we're doing in OREC in our state mission. Um, takes uh, oil from all variety of sources, runs through with a couple of days and you get diesel you can put in any uh, existing vehicle vehicle. Um, the manual for this machine as it stands is about this thick and you probably need at least one engineering degree to actually get diesel out of it. Um, that's what we're, um, um, I'm a software guy and I'm working with the manufacturing guys on trying to automate this to the point where you can have it sitting wherever, you push the button, you come back and you fill up your car and that's really all you worry about. Um, so all the valves will get replaced, you know, by electric valves. Um, my part is actually an embedded computer, um, you know, much like the, the handhelds or the smartphones that people have. Um, that will um, follow a recipe for whatever particular size processor is plugged into. Um, then it will go ahead and say, hey, we got 50 gallons for you. They'll be, um, that will actually sync up with the web so the people don't have to go out and be punching buttons in the rain. They can sit in their office, say, hey, I need gas or diesel for next weekend. Or it gets really interesting is, well, hey, I've got 30 extra gallons that I'm not going to use. Why don't um, I let somebody else come and use that? They come in, they slide their card through this uh, the same computer, just go ahead and fill up. Um, they can pull up that website and see all the different processors wherever they are. So it's a uh, distributed, um, uh, you know, grassroots style um, uh, uh, fuel production, really. You might also. Uh, he's got a much larger, much cooler biodiesel processor, also a little more expensive and less portable. Um, his problem is that to get the optimal uh, gain out of the seed as he presses it, he um, uh, needs a specific moisture. This is because um, you can get Chinese made presses and you can get German made presses and the German made presses are at least an order many to be more expensive. Um, so for to be more accessible to everyone, he wants the cheaper presses which are more, uh, they care more about the moisture. Um, what we're trying to do is run that through just um, a more standard farming grade uh, moisture sensor like from when you're harvesting the fields the combines will often tell you the moisture content of the seed. We're trying to use one of those sensors, um, again using a similar embedded computer to um, inject water as the uh, seed goes through the sensor to give it the, uh, the optimal, um, to get the optimal yield for the seed that he's feeding it. Yeah, it's a base sensor, and um, which should give us a lot better accuracy. And uh, yeah, well, go from there. And I'll also selfishly, <laughs> that's hopefully my job when I graduate, so for uh, a month or two, so. Yeah. Keith, do you have anything else to say about this process? Uh, he's uh, he's been struggling. The, the struggle is trying to get it working. And then the whole automation. Again, he's a manufacturing engineer, not the kind of thing that you do well. Why did, how does manufacturing relate to renewable energy? Well, this is the controls. This is the thing. Well, some of the problems that we've had to try and figure out on this on this processor is when you're making biodiesel, you've got your your waste cooking oil, which we've got a bad of it right there, some pretty nasty stuff. But we add sodium hydroxide and methanol to it in certain amounts and let it react. And what we get out is we get some crude biodiesel and we also get some some waste that we call glycerin. Generally that's heavier than the biodiesel when we sink down to the bottom. Now last year there was a biodiesel team that made this processor and all they did was they just cranked the valve down on the bottom and waited until they could see all the glycerin had drained out. We're trying to design it so computer doesn't. So we had to try and figure out how to tell the computer the difference between when it's pouring out glycerin and when it starts pouring out biodiesel so it can shut off. And same thing with our wash tank here. Um, after we're done making the biodiesel and drain off the glycerin, we transfer it over to our wash, tra wash tank and rinse it with hot water, which will get more part solid particulates out. We'll get a much better product at the end, but it also creates more 
more waste down at the bottom, the metal sink down at the bottom. So we had to, once again, drain that off without draining the diesel off. And we figured out how to do that by using uh, voltage meters, voltage sensors. We can sense the resistance, the difference between the resistance between the uh, glycerin, the biodiesel, the soap, as, as we call it, that's the waste product from here, and the finished product biodiesel. And then uh, we're using actually sprinkler valves to replace all these manual valves. Uh, we figured we could do those guys because they run about $11 a pop versus $190 for some actually quality ones that are designed to run harsh chemicals through it. Um, these ones, we're pretty sure for the amount of exposure that they're going to have, and we're going to have a rinse cycle through it, we're pretty sure that these guys are going to be able to stand up to the chemicals. But we just figured that it's a lot easier to get $11, $12 valves rather than the 190 ones. And that makes me happy since I'm paying for this. Yep. Yeah, exactly. He's paying for both of them. So. Yeah. Exactly. So those are some of the bigger problems we had to deal with. And uh, right now we're trying to trying to make a manual run of some, some diesel. And that's giving us some problems that we're getting it figured out. So uh, when, not if, when all these pieces come together and are working perfectly, right? Right. Yep. Um, you take these units and you put them in any uh, small business that already has a, a diesel fleet. Delivery trucks, plumbers trucks, you know, groceries. Anybody that can, uh, you know, has with the local farmers that can pull in the grain and whatnot for, for the oil. And, um, and then as an added uh, income source, they go ahead and sell their surplus capacity. I'm thinking the drive